There's a few different ways that we can classify costs, and they all have their pros and cons, their benefits to classification in different ways. We're going to classify costs here by behavior. Now you may think, what does that mean? Do costs have behavior? And we could say, well, yeah, costs do have behavior in that they act in certain ways in relation to other activities. We're going to classify the two types of costs here being fixed costs and variable costs. This type of classification is not included in financial accounting. So if you're going from financial accounting to managerial accounting, this is going to be a new concept. And the reason we're going to have cost classifications by behavior is that it really helps with projection. So we have to have this because when we're looking into the future, where it's really going to be helpful if we can determine how costs act so that we can make projections based on different levels of production. So we have fixed costs. Fixed costs mean that as production level rises, the cost remains fixed. So for example, if we have the activity down here, we'll say this is production if we're making units of something. As we make more units of something, the cost total remains the same. Remember here that we're talking about total cost, not cost per unit. We're starting here with total cost. So for example, if we're saying that the rent is going to be $1,000 a month, then it really doesn't matter how many units we make. If we're producing things in a warehouse and we make one unit in that warehouse, then it still costs $1,000. If we are producing in that warehouse and we make, say, 100 things, the rent still is $1,000. If we keep producing in that warehouse and we maximize the production of the warehouse, let's say it's 5,000 things, well, then units of production, whatever we make, then it's still going to cost us $1,000. No matter what we do, the rent is going to be the same. And so if you look at that in terms of the fixed cost, you're going to say, well, uh, it, it's going to be what it is no matter what. So when making projections, then we can think of, okay, how many units do we have to produce in order to uh, pay off the rent, pay off the fixed cost? So th the other types of behavior that we're going to have, the major second group that we're going to have, and we're going to try to basically break everything out into these two groups, even though it's not possible or not all costs fit nicely into these two groups. We would really like it if they did, because that would simplify the world here. And we're going to try to do so, so that we can make accurate projections. And so the other type is variable costs. And variable costs are going to go up with each new unit of production. So, for example, if we're making guitars and this is the cost of wood, the total cost of wood, and this is the activity, how many guitars we're going to make. Well, if we make one guitar, then it's going to cost, uh, or if we make one guitar here, <laughs> it's going to cost so much. And then if we make two guitars, well, the, the activity went up and the cost is going to go up in proportion. It's going to be a straight line because uh, the cost is going to go up with the same a number of units. Let's say the cost is for wood that's going to go in the guitar. If we make three guitars, well then the cost of wood is going to go up in proportion to the number of guitars that we're making. So so wood or direct material that goes into, into the cost of production is going to go up you would at a constant rate and as opposed to something that is fixed such as the rent. If we know those two things then it's really useful for us to then make projections into the future because now we can say, okay, how many guitars do we need to make in order to, you know, get to this level of cost? And of course, we'll add into this pretty soon. We'll add into it the amount of revenue per guitar we're going to get. And if we take the revenue minus the variable cost, then we can say, okay, how much are we making over the variable cost to see how many units we then need to have in order to clear the rent price. And that's how we start to kind of think about these things. What do we need to produce in order to clear our costs? It's a lot easier to make those types of production projections if we can break all costs up by behavior between fixed costs and variable costs. Now, some costs will, will line up in these two very easily, and it won't be a problem. If we're talking about wood in the guitar, then that's probably pretty straightforward. If we're talking about the rent, that's pretty straightforward. But we're going to have some things that aren't quite as easy to uh, go into these two components. They may have 